Welcome back to the Parkinson's Doctor channel. This is Dr. Ramon Rodriguez, a neurologist specialist in movement disorders. And today, uh, the theme is uh, multiple system atrophy versus Parkinson's disease. Two conditions that are very similar, very often confused. There is a lot, lot of confusion among patients when they go see the doctor thinking they have Parkinson's disease and the doctors tell them that uh, we believe they might have multiple system atrophy. So today we will uh, discuss those differences and, and why we think that way. Before I, I move forward, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel, The Parkinson's Doctor. That way you will receive a, a notification as soon as new videos are posted. And not only that, you will become part of this uh, uh, community. You will be able to... Uh, uh, suggest uh, themes and, and topics to be uh, uh, discussed. And also uh, you will be able to ask questions. Remember, there's no uh, fee to subscribe to the YouTube channel. So uh, let's go ahead and get going now. So multiple system atrophy and Parkinson disease and, and the short are MSA and PD. Uh, these are both neurological disorders, neuro neurodegenerative disorders affecting both movement and autonomic functions. However, there are some important differences between them regarding disease progression, uh, response to medication, autonomic symptoms, and pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic therapies. And uh, these are the things that differentiate one condition versus the, the other. So let's go ahead and move uh, into each of these areas so uh, we can see the difference between MSA and Parkinson's disease. So. To begin, let's talk about disease progression. And uh, MSA is a rare condition. Unfortunately, it progresses a lot faster, much faster to Parkinson's disease. And about 50% of people with MSA are wheelchair users five to six years after the diagnosis. Whereas most people with Parkinson's disease can maintain independent mobility for more extended periods. And this is one of the main differences. And we actually say that if a person is going from walking uh, to uh, require the use of a wheelchair uh, in the first five years of the condition, most likely they are suffering from something that is not exactly Parkinson's disease, but one of these atypical Parkinsonian syndromes. The other thing is that MSA also seems to have a shorter life expectancy than Parkinson's disease, with a life expectancy between 7 and 14 years uh, um, and, and in many patients, it will be even shorter, between 6 and 10 years. Uh, so, so this is another difference between MSA and Parkinson's disease. Obviously, some people might have a longer expectancy, depending how they take care of themselves, you know, what kind of care they're receiving and how the disease is evolving. Some people might even live shorter. So, so th this is something that is just an average when we look at the um, large number of patients that we see with this condition. The next item is response to medication. And Parkinson's disease, we know that is characterized by the loss of dopamine producing neurons in the brain. And this, this is what leads to the tremor, stiffness, slowness, and frequently the balance problems associated with this condition. And these symptoms usually respond well to levodopa treatment because it replenishes dopamine levels in the brain. However, People with MSA also have Parkinsonism, but it is due to more widespread damage to multiple parts of the nervous system. And because of this, MSA is typically minimally responsive or not responsive at all to uh, levodopa. Still, your doctor should be offering you levodopa. You can try it. And, and the reason what I recommend this is that while you might not have the, the very same robust benefit from uh, carbidopa levodopa, at least a little bit of improvement is better than uh, nothing. Talking about autonomic symptoms, and, and every time I, I, I mention the word autonomic, I, I always like to explain that these are the body functions that you don't have under voluntary control. So we're talking about your heart rate, sweating, um, uh, digestion, and, and similar things. And both MSA and Parkinson's disease can cause autonomic dysfunction, which is the impairment of these voluntary functions, such as blood pressure control, heart rate, sweating, urination, bowel movements. However, autonomic dysfunction is more severe and more common in people suffering from MSA than in Parkinson's disease. And people with MSA often have orthostatic hypotension, which is a drop in blood pressure 
open standing that can cause dizziness and fainting. This is a very bothersome and disabling symptom in this population. And in people with Parkinson's disease, this could happen uh, as well. However, it happens later in their disease compared to people that have multiple system atrophy. Uh, in MSA, they also have urinary problems such as frequency, urgency, and incontinence. And the bowel problems such as constipation and fecal incontinence are also quite frequent, as well as sweating abnormalities such as reduced sweating and heat intolerance. And, and this is why we always tell people with MSA and also Parkinson's disease uh, that they need to be very mindful, very careful, and stay very well hydrated, especially during the summer months. However, these symptoms are more pronounced in the MSA population compared to the Parkinson's disease population. And in Parkinson's disease, they tend to happen later in their condition. Looking into the pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic therapies. So we know there is no cure for either MSA or Parkinson's disease, but some treatments can help manage the symptoms and improve the quality of life of this Patients And the main pharmacologic therapy for Parkinson's disease, we all know that is levodopa, which can reduce the motor symptoms for many years. Other medicines such as dopamine agonists, the monoamine oxidase inhibitors, COMT inhibitors, anticholinergics, and amantadine can be used uh, to treat the symptoms of Parkinson's disease or the uh, levodopa side effects sometimes. However, for MSA, this pharmacologic therapy is less effective and mainly aim at treating autonomic symptoms. So for example, uh, medications that we commonly use in the MSA population include uh, fludrocortisone, mydodrine, or droxidopa. These are medicines that are used to treat the symptoms of orthostatic hypotension. Uh, anticholinergics or botulinum toxins can be used to treat urinary symptoms. Laxatives and enemas can be used to treat constipation. And then non-pharmacologic therapies for both MSA and Parkinson's disease include physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, and then supportive devices such as walker or wheelchairs. And these therapies can help improve um, the mobility, balance, coordination, speech, swallowing, and activities of daily living. So, you know, just as a quick summary, this, these two conditions are very similar and and. 90% of the people with uh, MSA are initially diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. However, when people with MSA uh, are not improving with the uh, therapy with levodopa and the condition seems to be progressing, they're having more issues with ambulation. This is when uh, the suspicion that they might be suffering from something else that is not classic Parkinson's disease uh, usually is brought up and then the recommendation to see a movement disorder specialist to confirm this is eventually made. So um, once again, these conditions are very similar. Uh, sometimes that is even a gray zone. It's very difficult to tell and separate one condition versus the other, but your neurologist should be able to work with you uh, uh, in, in regards to, to trying to find what the final diagnosis is. As I mentioned in the previous video, uh, there is no test to diagnose uh, MSA. There is no test to differentiate MSA from Parkinson's disease. The DAT scan is going to be positive in people with MSA. And even the, uh, the skin biopsy that we have been doing, I'll bring a video about the skin biopsy later, but the skin biopsy uh, eventually will be positive as well. Well, I, I, I hope that this, this video helps clarify what are the differences between MSA and Parkinson's disease, what your doctor thinks that you might have MSA and not uh, Parkinson's disease and understand the challenges a little bit easier. Once again, I, I encourage you to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you will receive a, uh, a notification when new videos are uh, published. And we will follow up this video with the script uh, of uh, this conversation uh, today for you to have access uh, in writing, and, and you might be able to share this information with your doctor, your, your nurse practitioner, or your uh, caregivers, and even your children. Thank you very much for your attention, and we'll see each other in the next video. Thank you.